All right, I just wanted to give you a little tip in regards to the AR-15 when you have it set for a 300 meter battle sight zero. I've heard the statements before that you're shooting high at 100 and 200 and you're not going to be able to shoot good at 100 and 200 with the 300 meter setting. Your rounds are going to uh, impact a little bit high and you may be uh, missing your target. So people will use that argument to say, well, a 200 meter setting is better, 100 meter setting is better or whatnot. Now there's more than one way to do things out there, so I'm not going to disagree with them. It depends on your environment and what you're doing. Again, but this is uh, this little tip is for you guys. If you do have a 300 meter battle sight zero setting on your rifle, you can engage 100 and 200 meter targets accurately without a lot of work. All it takes is just a little bit of muscle movement in your thumb. And the reason I say that is a lot of people forget that on an A2 style rear sight setup like this, there are two apertures, not one. You have your unmarked aperture, which is the small aperture. That's the aperture you use to zero your rifle to 300 meters. Now, if you want to shoot less than 300 meters, if you determine your targets around 200 to 100 meters or possibly closer, and you're tactically able to do so, flip that sight to the 02 setting. If you flip the sight to the 02, you automatically have a 200 meter zero. That's engineered into the sight setup. That's how it's designed to work. One caveat to that is the rear aperture or the aperture on the 0 to 2 is a lot bigger, so it may take a little bit more work on your end to center that shot really well. When you're shooting the 0 to 2, you'll notice your groups will be slightly bigger than if you're using the smaller aperture. That's just the nature of a peep sight setup. But with your 0 to 2 up, your sight is zeroed at 2 when it's flipped up. You might say, well, what about 100 meters? The difference in bullet trajectory on a 5.56 round between 100 and 200 meters averages between 1 and 2 inches. It's not enough to worry about, especially when you're talking about a service grade AR-15 that will get you around 1 to 2 MOA. Normally, it'll be right around 2 MOA, which means it groups around 2 inches at 100 yards if you're using the standard cheap factory stuff. This is with a service grade rifle such as this. If you use better made ammunition, you can shrink that group down to about an inch. In some cases, you can even get sub-MOA if you use good ammo. But again, if you're shooting less than 300 meters, use this aperture, the 0 to 2, if you want to get, uh, if you're, you know, if you're worried about shooting high. Now, to put things into perspective, if you're... Remaining on the 300 meter zero with the small aperture, at 100 to 200 inches, you're looking at about 4 to 5 inches at 100, you're going to shoot high, and 5 to 6 inches at 200. So the difference isn't that much. It's going to vary a little bit depending on ammo, depending on the specific barrel, so keep that in mind. The best thing to do is get out there yourself, see what happens, but that's about the average. Now, what I'll do is I'll read... From Technical Manual 9-1005-319-10. The reason I'm doing that is just so that way I can read from it. It's on page 58 of this Technical Manual. And it's just to show you that I'm not making this stuff up. This is stuff that's been in place for years. Anybody that's well trained in uh, M16, M4 and whatnot knows about this. And this excerpt reads as follows. The normal rear sight aperture, unmarked, flips forward to expose a larger aperture, marked 02. Use the 02 aperture only when the 3 is aligned with the mark on the left side of the receiver and the sight is rotated down. What it's talking about is this, the elevation knob. Make sure your uh, rear sight is bottomed out pretty much on the 3 mark, which I explained earlier, that's how you correctly get a 300 meter uh, battle sight. So you want to make sure it's bottomed out if you're going to use the 0 to 2. All right, to continue on, it goes on to say you will automatically get a 0 of 200 meters. Use the 0 to aperture when you, when shooting at night or at close range, and it provides it examples of such as in a city or in a dense jungle or forest. So there you go. 
in a nutshell, that is why I stick with the 300 meter. Pretty much what I've shown you is you can, you if you know how to use these sights, you can engage pretty much point of aim from almost point blank range to uh, all the way out to 600 meters. That's why I like the 300 meter zero with this sight. It goes along with the saying, don't fix what ain't broke. It's what the sight is designed for. This has been around for years. Again, if you have different sights other than this, do what works best for you. Of course, if we're talking, you're not even talking about optics and whatnot, that's a totally different ball game. But for the A2 sight, you want a 300 meter battle sight zero, in my opinion. And just to demonstrate, I'll go ahead and flip it to the zero two aperture. It's on the big aperture, so I have near point of aim, near point of aim engagement from zero, from point blank, which about 25 meters is where you're gonna get your first point of aim. Any closer than 25 meters, look about a 1.5 inch difference in bullet impact. The bullet's gonna impact about one to 1 1.5 inches low. That's due to the length of the front sight post, the distance between the front sight post there and the barrel. It's about an inch and a half, two inches. Um, variable, depending on the type of rounds, whatnot. Now, so from 25 meters to 100, I got my POA set up. From 100 out to 200, the flat trajectory of the round still allows me to maintain that point of aim. If my target is at 300 meters, I'm going to switch to the small sight. There's my 300 meter battle sight zero right there. And in my other video, I talked about how to guesstimate range using the front sight post, which that's in the field manual. I've already been accused of stealing that from another YouTuber, but wrong. That's from the field manual. That's taught. Anybody that's taught uh, by a good instructor in the military will learn that. But in any case, there's my 300 meter. If I determine the target is farther than 300 meter, I start utilizing my windage knob. There's my 400 meter mark. Continue on. There's my, where is it? There's my 500 meter mark. And then there's my 600 meter. So there you go. It's too easy. It is too easy. You don't need a fancy degree or anything. Just understand your weapon system. Understand this rifle. It, I, I've said it already in a couple other videos. If you're going to spend the money on this rifle, if you're going to spend your hard earned money, take the time to fully understand the basics of the rifle and understand the sight system that you're using with the rifle. Whether it be an A2 style sight system, a standard flip up iron sight, whether you're using a uh, magnified optic such as an ACOG or whatnot, or using like an EOTech or an Aimpoint, understand what the capabilities of the setup is. So, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed the tip. I uh, got a little long-winded there. But again, just remember with the 300-meter 300 meter, uh, sight, uh, battle sight zero, you can engage closer targets. Just flip that sight. All it takes is a little bit of movement of the thumb to do so. So, all right, thanks for watching and stay safe.